Hey guys, what's up? It's Pixelated Apollo. Thanks for stopping by and welcome to another online battle in Medieval 2 Total War. This is a 2 vs 3 siege battle where me and the Ryan King are defending a Middle Eastern wooden castle. And look how awesome this wooden castle is. It, it has the right amount of tree ratio. It's sunset so the lighting is just right. And the roads, they're going uphill, downhill, they're connecting. It's so awesome. And look at the town center. Isn't this just a cool site right here, right next to the keep? I don't know. I love it. And this battle replay is super awesome as well. It's super close from start to finish. I was on the edge of my seat. So I really hope you enjoy this battle replay. Make sure you get some snacks and drinks because this is going to be a good one. So the rules for this one was, I, there wasn't a lot of rules. I think it was like max one wooden artillery, no guns, max three cav. I think that's about it. Actually, I think two gun, two units of guns were allowed. So those were the rules, pretty plain and simple. Now there's a lot of factions and units on the, on the battlefield right now. So I'm gonna edit it and try to make this uh, army composition process a little bit faster. So let's go ahead and start with my Venetian army. Starting with my heavy infantry, I have four Venetian heavy infantry, which they're very awesome at what they do, which is smashing skulls and killing people. Over here, I have four dismounted feudal knights. This unit has the general in it, standing tall and proud. Way over here, the last of my heavy infantry, I have three dismounted broken lances. Now, my skirmishers, I have two Venetian archers. They do not have armored upgrades, but they look pretty cool without it. And on the opposite side, I have three uh, Pavi's crossbow militia so they're ready to go ready to kill some people with their crossbows pierce their armor and the rest of my army I have an artillery a trebuchet I have a Karacho standard and I have one unit of pikemen because you gotta you gotta have at least one unit of pikes when you're defending a castle and the final unit is the strad unit my only cav unit which really all you need is one unit of strads and you can destroy people so let's go ahead and check out my ally here the Ryan King so the Ryan King is commanding the Spanish he has three dismounted feudal knights and three sword and buckler men oh oh where'd those bastards go here they are they're a very cool unit so three of them and over at the town center he has two dismounted conquistadors this unit has his general in it hello general looking extra fresh today and over in the corner here he has three dismounted chivalric knights and i think that's pretty much his heavy infantry for his pike force he has four units of terraco pikemen very awesome pike unit very good at holding choke points if you're going to play a siege battle be sure to get some pikemen it's going to be very useful now his skirmishing force he has two Ogmagavars, I think is how you pronounce it. It's a Javi unit, and just having a couple Javi units in a siege battle is really useful as well because they can kill all the heavy infantry that are fighting in the choke points. So I'm pretty sure these two units are going to rack up a bunch of kills here. And he has one Pavi's crossbow unit, and that is his Spanish army. Now if we head over to the attacking armies, the attacking team, we have the Moors commanded by 16 Windwalker 16. By the way, he donated $35 to my Indiegogo campaign. So thank you, buddy, from the bottom of my heart for supporting that project. I truly appreciate it. Now let's check out his army comp. Over here, he has a general's bodyguard and a wooden or a trebuchet. All trebuchets are wooden. And over here, he's got one unit of peasant crossbowmen. And he has three desert archers, so that's his skirmishing force. For his heavy infantry, he has four urban militia, pretty good pickup there. And he has four dismounted Christian guard. Oh, they're so nasty. Those Christian guard, they are dirty, dirty bastards. And he has one unit, if I can find them. Where did they go? Well, it's uh, Hashashim, so they're probably hidden somewhere, being sneaky. Where the heck? What the heck? All right, anyways, just know that he has one Hashashim somewhere hidden in the trees. Now, if we head over to the allies of the Moors, we have the Hungarians commanded by Russian king. I guess the Hungarians ran out of kings, so they had to borrow the Russian one. So, uh, all right, that was a pretty stupid joke. But his skirmishing force, he has three Pavis crossbow militia. His heavy infantry, he has three or four dismounted chivalric knights, and he has four dismounted feudal knights. 
and somewhere in the mix his general is in this unit or he's in the battlefield assassin unit that's kind of in the center here they're kind of all jumbled up here so i'm pretty sure battlefield assassins are equi equivalent to hashashim but i'm really not sure he has two generals bodyguard one late period and one early period which i've seen quite a bit i've seen that a lot in online battles and he has one trebuchet and that is the hungarian force Last but not least, we have the Sicilians attacking the Western Wall, commanded by Steve-03. He's got four units of dismounted broken lances, four dismounted Norman knights, one general's bodyguard with the general in it, and he has two sword and bucklermen, two mounted Norman knights, so bringing some extra cav. He has a trebuchet, one peasant archer unit, and about three pavis crossbowmen. So that's the Sicilian force. I'm going to go ahead and cut the video to where this siege battle really starts to take off. Alrighty, guys, welcome back. So the three attackers we've got the Moors to the south, we've got the Hungarians to the east. And over here we have the Sicilians to the west, and right now they're just destroying our walls, they're bombarding, nothing crazy is really happening. But if we look at the Moors, I notice that his trebuchet is getting a little too far away from his main body, he's getting a little gutsy here, and I really want to punish him for that. I don't want to just sit back and let him destroy my wall, so I've got my unit of strads marching outside of my, uh, my walls here, and strads they're the best unit for taking out objectives so I'm setting them up I'm just trying to I'm trying to act casual you know like you know you know I'm just going out for a walk just uh, letting the horses legs breathe a little bit just gonna go out let them go potty and then I'll come back in I'm not gonna do anything sneaky here so I got them coming out and I'm also at the same time I'm rushing forward my Venetian archers cuz look at the terrain here this hill will give my archers a massive range bonus, so I might be able to skirmish this trebuchet to death because the Moors, they don't have any cab except for this general's bodyguard. They don't have any archers to defend, so I'm going to have a free skirmish against this trebuchet. Also, I'm going to get some decent charges off with my strads. So there goes another cutscene of them taking down walls. And uh, I'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit to show you what happens here. Now this is the very start of the combat of this siege. Here we go. Strads, look how lightning fast they are going down this hill. They are such a deadly unit. So awesome. So I'm going straight for the general's bodyguard. And he does a smart move there. He charges back, which really nerfs my charge. And I don't think I kill a single unit of his general's bodyguard yeah he just killed like four of mine maybe even more like seven uh but that's okay i've got my skirmishers set up here and look at this relent relentless volley i'm putting down on these trebuchet crew very awesome i'm using fire arrows so it's extra damage not as accurate but it is extra damage there they go it's so awesome i love watching fire arrows Oof. Getting some good kills on his general's bodyguard. And I'm killing some crew. So he's soaking up the fire. He's okay with, uh, you know, taking up the fire for his crew. This is where I switch to, uh, you know, instead of using fire arrow, I just use, like, standard arrow. Uh, because they're more accurate and they get more volleys off. And I'm trying to get as many volleys as I, as I can on this general's bodyguard. So I can weaken their numbers. Because the general's bodyguard is pretty deadly. But look at this. Sicily out of nowhere. Coming from the trees. He's got some uh, Norman knights. And my strads are in trouble. They are in big, big trouble. Right now they're at 26. And then I'm running my, my uh, archers away. Because the moors are now charging forward with their cav. And I'm just trying to get out of there. Just, just trying to spare the lives of my strads. And the Ryan King, he makes a great move here. He sends up some pikemen to protect everybody from that deadly cav. And I'm going to go ahead and continue to fire at the General's Bodyguard. So, a lot of mind games so far. Pretty, really tactical. and I, I love it so far. It's pretty awesome. Here we go. Just running around, waiting for a good opportunity. I was trying to sneak in and charge this uh, trebuchet, but it's just too far away. Oh! 
This is a pretty this is a pretty cool looking scene right here. How his pikemen are protecting my uh, Venetian archers. It's good teamwork. Oh crap. If we look over here, the Hungarians. I had the same expression when I was playing this live. Hungarians coming out of nowhere. And he, he's using a pretty good tactic here. He's using the uh, good old crossbow shooting through the choke points. But the only problem with this tactic is that you have to make sure you support your archers. And me and the Ryan King, we're like, let's just go out there and kill them. We're not going to let them just sit there and shoot us to death. Let's just charge. Because all he really has is a couple of battlefield assassins. That's it. So look at this. Venetian heavy. They're going to they're gonna kill some pavies. Look at them swing their little, like, club type weapon. Just destroys people's lives <laughs> and now they're fighting these battlefield assassins which they should be able to handle um, but it's, it's still gonna be a pretty tough fight <clears throat> there goes another wall and the Ryan King he's gonna send out some sword and buckler men and this is getting nasty really fast and now we're quickly uh, setting up our our Pavi's crossbowmen because if he's going to come out here and fight us, we might as well get some archers up on the walls and try to weaken their numbers. The Ryan King over here, he was like, dude, just pull back. You know what? Never mind. Just go back and fight. Just fight him. Uh, because we felt like we were a little out positioned here. But since we're winning on this side, we can send troops out there and then support our, our units over here fighting in this choke point. So we were okay with charging back in there. I've got my pike militia setting up, trying to prevent the cav from charging into our, our flank here. But it's still going to be pretty challenging. Oh, they're not set up though. Oh. Oh, he's going he's gonna to call off the charge. But I'm lucky there. There, I, uh, I break his battlefield assassins. We are winning this. We are taking over the walls. And his pavis are dying. Which is a really good win for us. So there's another charge there into my pikemen. It was a pretty good charge too. Pikemen, I'm, I'm very bad with pikemen. I just couldn't get them in position. And a lot of them were killed in that charge. Now I'm sending out more Venetian heavy infantry. And look at this, I've got my, look at the pavies, this is just a perfect position here. Getting a bunch of kills on this uh, general's bodyguard, who's just kind of running around, taking hits. <clears throat> He's going after this uh, stationary Venetian heavy infantry unit. At first, I thought his general was in this unit, so I was like, dude, just close the gap on this guy and we can kill his general. And then I was like, wait, where's the general? We've been bamboozled. General is not in this unit. But hey, it's it's still really good to kill a uh, General's bodyguard. Oh, there's a nice hammer and anvil strike on these uh, sword and buckler men. Alright, so at the same time, the Moors are quickly setting up their army. They're preparing to push on the southern front. They're preparing their men. Right now, we're really just focusing on this fight. And we defeated them. We defeated that small force. Now, the, the Hungarians, they still have a lot of... I mean, they have like 85% of their army. We've only killed like maybe 25, maybe 25. I, actually, well, I don't know. Somewhere around there. About 25 of his Hungarian army. But it's really convenient that we killed off his Pavi's crossbowmen. Because they can be really useful in the siege. Especially in a wooden castle. And this, I completely... I missed completely. Um, I was looking over here because the moors were putting pressure on us and my pikemen just got destroyed there very good charge from the hungarians a little payback there and now my pikemen are down to four which is not good so they're pretty much useless at this point might as well just send them to the town center all right so now we're setting up our forces they're feeling very awesome very victorious the morale is high and look at this, the Ryan King has his pavies set up as well. And we are just destroying this small little unit of their depleted pavies crossbow unit. Oh, the slaughter. Alright, let's go back over here because the, the Moors, 
are pushing forward and if you look right here i missed it i'm really sorry guys but there's a huge chunk of dead troops my trebuchet got a really good hit which is uh really lucky because it usually i get really bad luck with my trebuchets so the moors are attacking and they are attacking fast and we're kind of like all over the place we're like crap set up the forces we need to hurry up and uh hold off the choke points so I'm rushing forward some um, dismounted broken lances, the units that are over here. And I'm keeping my feudal knights over here to defend against the Sicilians. But the Sicilians are kind of taking their time, pushing up archers, kind of slowly marching up their heavy infantry. So they're not that big of, of a priority right now to worry about. So now I'm setting up my archers up on the wall. So I've got my Venetian archers. I've got my dismounted dismounted lances ready to go. I'm kind of moving them out of the way because he's just skirmishing them to death. And we're just kind of waiting now. The Hungarians are now marching forward as well. So this is, we either stand and fight or we retreat. And our decision was to stand and fight. So hopefully we can hold out through the night. And I hope this decision is a good decision. Look at this, point blank fire with my Venetian, Venetian archers right into his uh, peasant crossbowmen. I really wanted to kill them because they're pretty deadly. So he is pushing uh, some urban militia down this this uh, little area, kind of like the main gate kind of area. And we're just trying to, we're scrambling around. We're just like, oh man, send some units over here, send some units over here. Uh, it's crazy, absolutely crazy fight. He's got some Christian guard now fighting off the feudal knights. I've got my standard in position to give my men extra morale. And now the Hungarians are charging in as well. Oh, so this this is getting intense. So uh, my troops here are kind of out of position, especially the uh, Spanish sword and buckler men. They're kind of sandwiched between two, uh, two Hungarian forces. But we're pushing, we're pushing back. We decided to hold our ground because we have a pretty good strong point here, especially with this uh, position of my Pavi's crossbowman. And he's got a lot of reserves just standing here. So I was like, you know what? If he's just going to stand there in the open, I might as well just focus my Pavi's at killing them because that's easy target. So um, let's, let's slow-mo. Let's do a little bit of a slow-mo because there is a lot going on. So we are holding off against the Hungarians. I've got all of my Venetian heavy fighting their hearts out trying to destroy them and then over here we've got a little fight going on in the center some feudal knights fighting off this urban militia mixed with uh, dismounted Christian guard and the Hungarians are pushing over here as well and this is where it gets desperate we'll go back to normal speed I have to send in my general's bodyguard wherever he is where is my general's bodyguard oh he's right here I think Yes, that's him. Actually, I don't send him in yet, so false alarm. <laughs> so the Hungarians are pushing on the flank here. We didn't really have anything to uh, defend, but the Ryan King's setting up some sword and buckler men to hold them back while we try to finish off the Hungarians over here. So this battle is all over the place. So let's go to this fight. Now the Hungarians are pushing through through these choke points. And we are holding, we are holding bravely. My Venetian heavy, inf or I keep calling them heavy infantry. My Venetian archers are getting a bunch of kills. And let's see. I snuck my, uh, my strads outside the wall here. I sent them around this way. And I, I quickly rushed them to the trees. I'm going to try to get some sneaky charges off on his army. Uh, be sure to watch my strats because I do get a couple of deadly charges off. He's got some dismounted Christian guard waiting in reserve. He's got his Hashashim in there fighting. Actually, he has two units of Hashashim. My poor dismounted broken lances are barely holding on over here. But check this out. Alright, here comes his charge. I love it. This is how deadly strats are. Boom! Look at that. Look at that. I just took out like more than half of that army. And I get out without even losing a single cav unit. Or single cav person or whatever. 
So, <laughs> pretty awesome charge. Now I'm going around. Couldn't really get a good charge off there. He got inside before he could reach. I'm just trying to find whatever I can to kill. Now I'm going after routing forces. Well, let's go back to these main infantry fights here. Hungarian's still fighting strong. We're just trying to keep him back. My men are de are very depleted and they're very tired. He's got some pavis over here giving uh, giving some harass. And over here, we won this little engagement and we are now pushing for his trebuchet because he pushed up his trebuchet. So we're trying to kill the uh, trebuchet crew. I've got some Venetian heavy supporting the Spanish. And look at this, my sword and my uh, broken lances, they're down to 16 and they're fighting off dismounted Christian guard. That's what this uh, standard can really do for your men. It gives them that extra morale, makes them fight to the end. Very useful in a siege battle. And now the Christian guard are pushing down this center. So man, we got a lot going on. If we look over here, the Sicilians are committing forces into uh, their choke points. They're attacking the western wall. And this is where it gets really bad because we are running low on forces. We're getting really stretched out thin. So I'm holding off the Sicilians with three units of feudal knights. That's it. And we are breaking some forces over here. My brave feudal knights fighting their hearts out. They're going to give it give it their all. Try to kill as many... Si si uh, <laughs> can't talk today. Kill as many Sicilians as they can. Words are hard. Alright, so this fight is still going on. Ryan King setting up his pikemen. Should be able to handle this depleted unit of Christian Guard. Got my strats coming in. Oh my god, we got a trebuchet fire going on. And we've got some Christian Guard breaking through. It looks like my broken lances here were slain on the battlefield. And now he's going to flank around. This is really, really bad, guys. So I told my standard crew here to to uh, let go of the standard and join the fight and we can surround these Christian guard. There they go. Very awesome. Now let's check out what the Hungarians are up to. Oh, look at this. We have some breaking here. That is good to see. That is much needed. And this is my general fighting, by the way. Oh man, there's just so much going on. So we've got this little pocket of Hungarians we have to take care of. And we've got some more over here. Oh man, look at this just death right here. This point blank turkey shoot on these Hungarians. A lot of Pavis are dying too as well. And that's pretty much what's left of the Hungarians. Uh, they really lost their army in, in the beginning of the siege. You know, they were the first ones to attack. Uh, here's my general getting his sword wet. Look at him go. Killing some Hungarians. Very awesome. For Venice. And we're winning down the center here. So this is going to be a, a very important victory. In that center as well. And now we're cleaning up these the, uh, the Moors here. So that was a very, very close combat. Just all over the place. It was intense. And we're finally taking the edge over here. We de There goes the, uh, the Hungarian general. That's going to be huge. And my general over here is kind of getting surrounded. There's a small force of feudal knights flanking around. I've got my pavis up here firing down, trying to keep them away. But my, my general is doing a pretty good job. Not really using a lot, not really losing a lot of, a lot of men. Oh, there's some, tr oh, some meat, some diseased meat trying to uh, beat us with uh, chemical warfare right now. And this is what's left of the Hungarians, basically. He's got uh, some battlefield assassins, but they break. He's got units over, oh yes, his feudal knights are breaking. So the Hungarians at this point are pretty much out of the battle. Now it's just down to the Moors and the Sicilians mostly. Sicilians have like 90% of their army left. Uh, my feudal knights were destroyed, which is pretty tragic, but 
you know, they did their job. They kept them at bay while, while we were focusing down the Moors and the Hungarians. Now we can send all of our forces to the Sicilians and try to kill them. It's, it's now slightly in our favor, but they can still come back and win this one. I've got my Venetian archers, they're out of ammo, and I'm, I'm using them as melee. I'm just trying to keep him in one position so he's not all, all over the place, so it's buying us time to set up our defenses. I've got some Hashashim over here joining the fight as well. Oh, there goes my Venetian troops. They are breaking. And we're also holding them down the center. <laughs> More Venetian archers buying these uh, Spanish forces some time. Come on. We've got hand gunners here. And we have some Shivrick Knights as well. So that's good to see. And then what's going on over here? I've got a small force of my uh, Feudal Knights still alive. There's one left. Look at this one Feudal Knight. So brave. I like that he's fighting to the end. For Venice, make me proud. Oh, he, oh, he's dead. Rest in peace, buddy. You did a good job. So the Ryan King, he has a lot of infantry left, where I really have nothing. The only, the only solid infantry unit I have left is my general's bodyguard, which is somewhere. Where is my general's bodyguard? Where did you go? I don't know. I think he's marching back towards the town center. Um, yeah, he's somewhere. Oh, is this him? Yeah, here he is. It's uh, 48 men are, are left in that unit, so that's pretty solid. And uh, we're going to need more support over here. Sicily's really pushing through, especially down the center. Oh, man. It's getting nasty. It's getting nasty. And over here, we have this small Norman knight force trying to kill my uh, standard crew. But that's not going to happen because they're, they're a spear unit. Let's see, let's see if they can kill him. Kill this guy. There you go. Now, re-grab the, the holy bell of justice. <laughs> March over that, man. Very good. But look at this. Sicily's slowly breaking through the center, which is not good at all. But we're holding, we're holding the choke points, that's for sure. And I'm also marching over my Pavi's crossbowmen. Most of them are out of ammo, but I can use them in melee if I need to. We have more breaking by the Sicilians, which is good to see. Not so much in the center though. And he has more reserves over here. And he's putting down suppressing fire with his peasant archers. Watch a volley here. Come on. Take your time, guys. There they go. I love fire arrows. I can never get enough of fire arrows. So Sicily is really trying to claim the center. Trying to kill all of the defending forces. But will it be enough? We will find out soon enough. Will we hold throughout the night... Here comes my general. He's really pushing hard on this flank too, and he has his general's bodyguard in there, so it's general v general. And I'm gonna reinforce this line. And this is pretty risky, because my general could die here. And I hate losing my general, especially when I could have saved him. But look at this, he's just like overwhelming my feudal knight unit. And I was like, Ryan, my general, he needs your help. Quickly, save the Venetian general. So he's rushing. Here's, here's his uh, rally forces here. The Venetian general was uh, blowing the horn of Venice or whatever. And then the Spanish were like, that's the Venetian general. We must quickly send some troops and, and help him. <laughs> but I'm kind of surrounded. I've got uh, sword and buckler men, dismounted Norman knights, and the general's bodyguard all gaining up on my general. And they're doing pretty well. I'm pretty impressed. I'm really glad that my general is like kind of staying in the back. 
He's like waving his arms in the air. He's like, over here, quickly, save us. Oh, now he's getting in the fight. Look at him. He's like, you think you can duel me? Think again, peasant boy. Go back to Sicily. Actually, he's kind of getting his ass kicked. <laughs> oh, he just killed this guy. Sneak attack. All right, this is where I retreat him and the Sicilians break. They're also breaking over here as well. So there's a lot of breaking from the Sicilians. A lot of breaking. <clears throat> and also his general, he gets out with three men. Oh, well, two men, including the general. So barely getting out. He's trying to keep this uh, force at bay. Here goes my general. He's going to continue to fight. He's just crazy bastard like that. And this little street alleyway fight is, is going on. It's just never ending. Okay, so this is pretty funny. Um, I'm pushing up the standard because I have to return the standard to the town center. I mean, you got to protect and, and carry the standard wherever you go. So I'm, mov I'm moving them forward. And then I notice that there's a very healthy unit of dismounted broken lances. So uh, I was like, crap. Hopefully he doesn't see me. Hopefully I can continue to march. There's dead cow meat being flung everywhere. It's just a disaster. <laughs> and uh, I guess he's just using that unit kind of as reserve over here. I've got my crossbows back here firing at that reserve unit trying to weaken their numbers. Oh yeah, getting some good hits. Nice use of pikemen from uh, the Ryan King. Now they're, they're getting all buggy though. They're looking the wrong way. <laughs> okay, okay, here comes... Alright, so I was like, crap. The dismounted broken lances, they're charging my, my standard, but they will stand and fight. They must protect the standard at all costs. And this is where I'm like, Ryan, I call for his help once again. Ryan, quickly, send some forces up here. Rescue this standard. They're down to nine men. And this is pretty cool. They're using the standard as like a shield. And they're fighting cl a close quarters. And it's a pretty tough fight. We have a mid-defeat by the Hungarians, I do believe. And there goes the uh, general of the Moors. We are now down to eight men. They're holding strong. But how long will they hold? Who knows? So Ryan's like trying to cut through these uh, Sicilians, holding them back. Pushing forward the pikemen. You gotta love seeing that. I love pikemen. They look so awesome. Look at that. He's trying to slaughter them to quickly rescue the standard crew. They are now down to seven. One of these bastards have to make it throughout the night. Come on. We must not lose the standard or our men will lose heart. And I, I'm, they're just dying like flies over here, dropping like flies. Down to four now, down to three, down to two. Will the Spanish reach us in time? They are finally breaking through the Sicilians. They are charging. We've got the general leading the way. He's like, quickly, men. <laughs> Look at him. He's hauling ass. He's like, Qu quickly, march, kill these dismounted broken lances. They finally meet up with him. He's down to one unit, one man, one, one guy defending the standard. Will he make it throughout the night? Will this unit break? Defeat seems certain for them. Come on, fight your heart hearts out, men. Will the Spanish save him? Oh, he's blocking, he's blocking two guys. Look at the Spanish are really trying to push through here, trying to rescue this guy. Oh, this guy's sneaking from behind. Oh, right in the back like a coward. And the crew are all dead. And it's just a second too late because look at this. The Sicilians are completely surrounded by the Spanish and they were just a few seconds too late. Rest in peace, uh, Caracho standard crew. You did a hell of a job. I will remember you. I will build a statue for you. 
So now, uh, this one's pretty much over, and this is a pretty clear victory for us. We have the Sicilians kind of doing a YOLO charge with this Pavi's crossbowman. Look at the destruction, pure destruction of this siege battle. We're pushing on the flank here. He's keeping us back with one unit of Pavi's crossbowmen. Very awesome fight. I really enjoyed the siege battle. So all the players involved, thank you so much for this. Thank you for not, you know, admitting defeat super early and fighting it out. It was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed it, guys. And the Pavis are breaking. And pretty soon we're going to cut off their escape, their retreat. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward actually. Because uh, the rest of, this, rest of this battle is just us running down retreating forces. There goes his general actually. He was down to like one. We finally kill him. So all the attacking generals are dead. All of our generals are alive. And... Here we go. We have a mid defeat by the Moors and a mid defeat by the Sicilians. So, a good game. I don't think I ever said what the the money was for this battle. It was, I think the money was 35k or no 25k for us defending and 34 for them defending. So they had a 9k advantage, I think. Anyways, um, I got 1,300 kills. Uh, I really sent my men in. I lost most. If you look, men lost. I lost a lot. Uh, 800. The Ryan King, he lost about half of his army, a little bit more. And he killed about 700 and captured 233. So good good job there, Ryan King. Uh, 16 Windwalker getting 591 kills. Everybody on the attacking team really carried their weight. So uh, Russian King getting 511. Steve-03 getting 633. So very awesome battle guys i hope you enjoyed this one and i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching guys